everybody. Uh, Baron with One Chiropractic with you again and Dr. Richard Barwell. And man, our last session, holy cow, I got fired up. I actually was just going off with Doc a little bit on, on the break there. And and uh, man, I just get so fired up about this stuff. And, and uh, I kind of cut you off, Doc. I apologize for that. But for the sake of being true to the size of our, our video sessions, I, I wanted to uh, just kind of stop you so that we don't rush through this second half of this time. So we're talking really about how the stress actually affects the brain. And, and so you were sharing with us the, the different elements of what's happening. So I want you to jump right back in where you were. I'm going to do my best not to spontaneously combust on the other side here. Well, I, actually, I, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because there's something I want to say. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And what I want to talk about is uh, the concept that, that chiropractors are sort of alone in this field and that's it. Uh, our greatest our greatest resource has always been our chiropractors and our, chi our chiropractic patients and our chiropractic advocates. Um, and we don't have to do this by ourselves. Matter of fact, we're crazy to do it by ourselves. Uh, I was just explaining to you that in my practice, I had my patients call the office, their office, not my office, because I wanted uh, I wanted twenty thousand people out there thinking that chiropractic offices belong to them, and they had to have people come down to their chiropractic office. And so uh, I just want to take a minute to salute you. Uh, you've been involved with chiropractic for a long time. Uh, I love the chiropractic advocates because they, they do the work for us and we can't do this by ourselves. And I just want to say thank you. And, and the Cairo One program that you that have set up here is just, it's amazing. Um, because, and I've said this before and I've got to say it again. When I asked you what the intent was, and you said it's about the power of the adjustment, I said, finally, somebody out there has got it. Somebody finally understands about chiropractic instead of the raw, raw, raw crap that we've put up for, for years. So how many new patients can you get this week? You know, it's not about that. If you've got the right idea and offer the right service, they're going to find you to the point where you can't handle it. That's exactly right. And that's one of the things that we find happening with people that shift their practice to neurologically based chiropractic, I have to warn you, you're going to see people beyond people with just back pain or neck pain. You're going to have sick, sick people coming to see you. And you're going to be able to provide life giving support for those people because you're going to change the nervous system. So uh, we'll get into this, but my hat's off to you and, oh, and thank you, you for, for what you do. Don't quit. Oh, I ain't going anywhere. I just dropped my daughter off at chiropractic school. And so I'm, uh, I'm in this for life. My son's following behind her. So we're fantastic here for a long time. We ain't going nowhere. Fantastic. Well, we want them all doing neurologically based chiropractic. That's the goal. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. All right. I'm going to pop this slide up. I think if everything goes well, yeah, look at that. There you go. You're getting good. This, this is getting scary. So that's where we ended up last time. The brain not self-regulating. It needs help. Effective stress reaches every system and organ and cell in the body. Stressors create inhibitory or excitatory responses through neurological control. Patterns happen over time and ingrained into long-term memory patterns. And those that's where the brain gets stuck, and that's why we start to exhibit uh, signs and symptoms. So let's see what we've got next. How stress changes the brain. And I want to go down into this a little deeper because you have to understand there, it's a. It's not just stressors. It's it's how it affects the various symptoms. Stress could trigger a chemical change that makes you irritable. Duh! How many people have had irritable stress responses? And just ask my wife; she'll tell you. French researchers discovered an enzyme that triggered by stress attacks a molecule in the hippocampus, which is responsible for regulating the synapses. Now, the hippocampus is really important. We're going to go into this and talk about these things, about what they actually do and how your adjustment affects things like the hippocampus and the entire limbic system. When synapses are modified, fewer neurological connections are able to be made. That means you lose the ability for neuroplasticity. You cannot develop new pathways. You can't develop new actions that allow you to adapt to what's going on in your life. These effects lead subjects to lose their sociability, avoid interactions with their peers, and have impaired memory or understanding. Those things, that's in red and in bold, because what do we got going on here? Well, number one, we have kids that are developing autism that exactly have this, lose their sociability, avoid interactions. What's going on with that brain to create this? 
we got problems that are happening with these children. Why? Is it, the, is it the vaccines or is it the food or is it the stress from the parents? Is it electromagnetic field? What is it that's going on? Something is happening in that brain that creates this response level. What about impaired memory? What's the other big thing we've got blowing out of, out of proportion right now? Alzheimer's. I'll show you exactly how this happens and how you can make a change with these people. Remember now, you're not treating them for anything. Your job is strictly to improve neurological function. Chronic stress shrinks your brain. Stressful life events harm your brain's memory and learning capability by reducing the volume of gray matter in the brain regions associated with emotion, self-control, and physiological functions. So all of a sudden, it's not just like, yeah, stress created a vertebral subluxation. No, no, no. Stress affected the, the, the motor of the central nervous system, the brain itself. And it's, that's the subluxation in process right here. It's how it happens. One stressful event can kill brain cells. One stressful event. No wonder these guys coming back from being in a war, having somebody trying to kill them every day, are so screwed up. They need a lot of care. Try to get the chiropractic into those guys, and of course we run into the medical system. They need chiropractic care on an ongoing basis more than anybody. Right. Ongoing stress can halt the production of new neurons in the hippocampus. Hippocampus is responsible for memories. Also may affect the speed of the connection between the hippocampal cells. So wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I try to recall something and I can't recall it. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's going on here? May affect the speed of the connections between hippocampal cells. Yep. That's stress. Hippocampus is especially vulnerable to ongoing emotional distress because of the damaging effect of cortisol. Hmm. Especially vulnerable to ongoing emotional distress. Yeah. Is this country going through any emotional distress? <laughs> uh, Holy smokes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 this is a, a really tough time for America right now. Yeah. And boy, we need to be taking care of the people out there that are trying to live with this crazy environment going on. But what do we got now? Yeah, that's crazy. Disrupts memory by triggering the brain's threat response. Well, when you trigger the threat response, and we're going to talk about this from the cortex of what happens in the cortex when you get a threat response, how we get stuck into a pattern of defense. And when you're in defense, there is no healing taking place. Well, there's no healing taking place downstream. We're going to have all sorts of problems. Right. Well, cortisol hampers the activity of the hippocampus. It increases the size and activity of the amygdala the brain's main center for emotional response and motivation. I kind of showed you this when I showed you what happens to the prefrontal cortex and how it affects the amygdala and so on, but this is important. The, side, the, the amygdala, which is your fear center, actually starts to increase in size, which means it gets triggered easier. So all of a sudden, the threat level starts to climb because now the amygdala is just so super sensitive that if you drop a safety uh, a pin on the floor, they think it's a gun going off. Yeah, which is out of control. Between that and <laughs> and your your thyroid type issues that are chronic, man, no wonder people are in anxiety all the time. You know, yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Those thyroid issues come from this. Yeah, because the hypothalamus is involved in this that controls all of that, and it's getting the message, the same message that the rest of that is. Danger, danger, danger. We got problems. Yeah. So the amygdala is responsible for fear processing, threat perception, and fight or flight responses. But it's just one part of the limbic system. So central nervous system becomes fixed in a fight flight response pattern and loses its ability for growth and healing. We can take a look. We can see that. You know, you have people coming in with high blood pressure, right? That's a fight flight response. Right. High heart rate. That's a fight flight response cold hands. That's a fight-flight response. That means they're stuck in this. The system is, is not adapting. Hardwired memory patterns of cortical imprinting continue to push the limbic system towards sympathetic dominance. Once you fall into that category, once the cortex of the brain keeps saying danger, danger, the, the, autonom or the, the autonomic nervous system now says we've got to be prepared to fight all the time. Mm -hmm. Once this takes place, the autonomic 
nervous system loses its ability to adapt and respond, and you stay in sympathetics, and you never recover. And this lowers our survival value, which are the two most important words in the English language. Yep. It's the biggest factor that chiropractic deals with is improving people's survival value in a world that's hostile. That's that's the, the gift of who we are and what we do. That's nuts. Just so the points here, the brain does not self-regulate. Stressful events harm your brain's memory and learning capability. One stressful event can kill brain cells. Stress increases the size of the amygdala. Stress directly affects the body's ability for growth and healing. And stress response patterns affect our survival value. Uh, you need to stay, uh, just take a look at this and say, where is the greatest value for you in your practice? Is it dealing with back pain and neck pain, or is it improving people's survival value? You need to change your dialogue. You need to change how you think. You need to change the message in your office, because what you're doing is you're selling chiropractic so short for a monetary return that they're going to give you money on when you can come up with a, a medical diagnostic code when you don't need that at all. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, again, we have these cliches in our profession that universally are accepted, which is we want to go to the cause, right? We, we don't look at the symptom. We look at the cause of the symptom. Guys, at the end of the day, the subluxation is a symptom. Thank you. I, I mean, it is, right? I mean, so, you know, you've got to ask that question, what caused that, right? And then when you, if we're really committed to going to the cause, then, you know, this becomes absolutely vital to your existence. And, and, and the beauty of it, hopefully others like me, I, granted, I've heard this before, so I, I grab a little bit more, but I at least have a foundation that I'm planting these new seeds into. So I have a bit better understanding, but this makes so much more sense. It should give you a sense of, oh, wow, okay. Like, I can wrap my mind around that. Like, that makes a lot more sense as to why we're doing what we're doing than what I was believing before and just having all these cliches that people have told me before. And, and, and you know, it changes the entire game. I mean, so you're right, Doc. You, you have to be willing to change your paradigm. You have to be willing. Those points that you just had on the screen, those are it. You know, that is – everything that that gives you your basis for why people need to be seen once a week right i mean because you know i ask this question all the time uh, you know from a consulting perspective with people they're like well what do you think maintenance is i'm like well it doesn't matter what i think it is what do you think it is well you know i don't know maybe maybe once a month i'm like are you saying that because you're worried about the objection because because i don't believe you believe maintenance is once a month because how often are you adjusting your kids some of you are doing it every day when they get home and you can tell they were playing sports or like, get down, let's go. And so if you believe that that's what's necessary, then, then that's what you should be proclaiming to the rest of the, of your community. The problem is one, you don't think they're going to buy it. And two, you don't have a justification. You just know your kids are better adjusted than not adjusted. But what we're giving you in this series is the why it is the foundational information of what that adjustment's doing, why it's having the effect it's having, and why you should tell everybody they should be under that kind of care. This isn't about money. This isn't about them being able to afford it. This is about educating the world properly. What they choose to do with this information is on them. Not everyone's going to say, holy crap, I get it, I'm in. But we don't need everybody to get it, right? We just need a certain percentage, right? We know this from Simon Sinek and from the business world. We've got to get to that tipping point, which is about five and a half, 15 and a half percent of the population to get it. And then it tips and the system takes care of itself. But isn't it funny that no matter what study you look at of all the years about how, what percentage of the population is getting adjusted, we're always right around that 10, 12, 13%. Yep. No one's ever legitimately gotten us to that 15 and a half, 16. Nope. It's actually dropped. Yeah. It's and actually so going down. What happens if we <laughs> say this unapologetically and then let the system tip? It's a law of, of um, a fusion of innovation. I mean, it's just a universal law in the world of, of people adapting or believing or moving in a certain direction. And, and so what happens if we are confident about what we're talking about rather than learning a script that some consultant gave us, right? Yep. That, that's the difference. So I agree. Awesome stuff, guys. I hope you're loving this stuff. We're loving it. We're going to keep giving it to you. Keep sending it to different people. But listen, today, let today be something different. Let, let today be a day where you start going to <laughs> practice and you actually start believing in yourself a little bit more. All right. Take this information and allow it to believe in yourself and say, you know what? I am doing great work. 
even if people aren't paying, even if you have insurance companies barking and you have all these different reasons why today isn't a good day, what happens if you go into the day and you say, but I'm making some significant difference in the people that I've seen today, even if you're only seeing two people. And if you're someone that's seeing 50, celebrate that as well, right? We, we got to celebrate what we're doing. And it starts with us believing in ourselves and giving ourselves permission to move forward with confidence. So we love you. We believe in you. You're doing amazing. I don't care what technique you're doing. It's working. And so keep working it, keep loving it. And we're going to be right there behind you, supporting you. You have people like Dr. Bellwell, Dr. Barwell and Dr. Heidi Havik and all these people out there that are doing the, the <laughs> major work behind the scenes to make sure that we continue to have information to give our community. So we love you. We appreciate you. Enjoy your day and we'll see you next time.